If you are generating a massive world with PCG, you don't want to load it all together at the same time because that's going to be way too expensive. Instead, you want to just load what you need kind of around the player as they move around. To do that, you can make use of PCG's runtime hierarchical generation combined with partitioning inside of PCG itself. I'm going to show you guys how to set up a very basic partitioning setup for this and explain some of the things that I wish I knew when I got started learning about this. So hopefully you guys can avoid some pitfalls that I have made. So let me show you how it works. To get started with PCG, as always, go to Edit Plugins. Make sure you have PCG turned on by searching PCG and turning on your procedural content generation framework, PCG, and restarting your engine if needed. But assuming that's all good, let's get started with making a very simple demonstration graph. So I'm going to right click, go to PCG, grab ourselves a PCG graph. I'll create an empty graph and I'll call it PCG underscore high gen for hierarchical generation, just a short form. And then I'll take it and drag it out into the world and then I will open it up. Let's go ahead and get started with something very simple. So I'm going to right click and just create a points grid. I'm going to change the sizes of this. I'm going to make the grid extends 5000 by 5000 by 50 and the cell size will be 500 by 500 by 100. I'm also going to change the coordinate space to be local component so we can move it around and also going to call points outside the volume in case this is too big compared to volume and turn that on. And then we're just going to use a simple static mesh spawner with a mesh entry of just a basic cube here. I'll grab the first one. So as you can see now in the world, right, you have a basic graph. And if we move it around, it moves with it. If I put it origin, all the cubes are right here in the middle. But if this was very large, this would be a problem. Now, the reason we said it's contained is because now I can shrink it smaller. And you can see the spacing just within here is correct for what we need. Why is this important? Well, I want to show you something as we get started with hygiene. I'm going to just make this area just very small for our volume because that is kind of all I need. I just need the cubes in this area. So I don't need this volume to be really any bigger. It can be just a tiny bit bigger. So it encompasses the volume just fine. So now how do we enable hierarchical generation for this? It's actually just a few checkboxes basically and relatively simple to set up. First thing you want to do is on your PCG component, open up the PCG component, go to settings and under settings, you want to turn on is partitioned and you want to change to generate at runtime. Now everything is going to disappear, but don't worry, we're not done setting it up. The next thing you want to do though is go on your PCG world actor and then you want to change serialization mode from never serialized to always serialized. And then there's a handy option here, treat editor viewport as generation source. If I turn this on, once we're done, we'll be able to just zoom in and have it treat the camera like the player as though they're moving around to really get a sense of is it working or not. The final thing we need to do is in the graph itself. We we'll just make sure nothing is selected. And then in the detail panel on the right, you'll see this settings section, use hierarchical generation. We want to turn that on and we could select a grid size. Default is basically 256. I'm going to change that to something quite small. Let's say 1600. And now let's see what happens when we take a look. And you'll quickly see that in our current example, well, nothing is going on. There's nothing here. Why is nothing here? Well, this brings us to the first thing that I really wish I understood and knew before I got started with everything. And that is we are using right now 2D grid. Right here in the settings, 2D grid and higher cool generations turned on. It's forward and side, but the up and down, it's just a big column through all of space. Now, I thought that would mean that it should use the location of the actual object in the Z axis, but no, it doesn't. And let me show you what I mean. If I go back to the create points grid and I turn off call points outside of volume, and then I come in a little bit closer. Oh, uh, well, would you look at that? We're getting things spawning in. That's a little bit difficult, maybe too small of a number here. So I'm going to change the hygiene grid size to maybe like 6400. And there you go. At 6400, we get more of what we expect. But you can see it is way in the air. It is not where we put it at all. It's up here. And so that is the first thing to note. If you're using an unbounded thing, it's going to be in the air. But now you can see as I fly out and fly in, it is correctly unloading and loading in the sections as I would want. Now, the other thing to note here is I am not in a partitioned world. The PCG graph is partitioned. It's loading in by chunks, but the world isn't. So you're not required to use a partitioned world to use partitioned PCG. Now, the reason I bring this up is because if you're making something that potentially blocks a vision after a certain distance, you know, it's relatively medium in size. You might think, oh, I can just load the entire thing, but you don't have to. 
you can just make it so it unloads past that kind of view distance to just optimize a little bit more. We can now change the grid size here. Let's say 128. And you can see here it is now using 128. So this is 128. And if I change it to 6400, you'll see it's lower. If I change it to 32 and then zoom in further, it's even lower. So that's probably not what you want. You want it to stay on the ground where your actual actor is. Thankfully, it's relatively simple to do, but requires something that you probably haven't used before. In our BCG graph, what we're gonna do is detach the static mesh spawner. We're gonna right click and search for get actor data to get the actor's information. We only want to parse a single point. So the mode is gonna to set to single point. And then very importantly, up top, instead of self, it needs to be original. Original, as it says, the source BCG actor rather than the generated partition actor. That's what you want, original. Because basically, all of a sudden, this node, instead of getting itself as an actor will get itself as every partition and as you saw they're going up higher and higher so it's zero point of the partition is higher and higher in the air so now that we have this the actual original get actor data we can go from the create points grid drag out and do set attribute the attribute math operation set that's all we need we're gonna plug in the get actor data into B. It's gonna throw an error because we haven't set it up yet. But in input source one, we'll hit the plus, go to point position. And we only care about position dot Z because in the Z axis, and I'm gonna copy it and paste it into input source two. So it's going to write the vertical position of these points as the original actors. And then if you plug this in, you'll see they're now on the ground. And if I take this actor and I move it up, you can see it has moved up. One thing you might notice is I don't have the cull points outside of volume checked. You're still loading the entire thing around. So unfortunately, what really needs to be done in this scenario is if I want to have this create points grid, cull points outside the volume, I turn it on, and then I need to make sure that the volume's height basically continues up until it reaches all the way where these points are in the actual world. Which means if I want these points all the way up here, then I need to scale this up quite a lot. So that way it appears only with this bounds at this elevation. Now, it's kind of unfortunate. I don't know why it is the way it is. But again, it's something I wish I knew. If you've designed it where you don't need to call points outside of the volume, you're fine. You don't need to do anything special. But just know that this is the way it is. So if you have no points and a very flat volume, this is why. The next thing I want to show you guys is utilizing this. This might look a little bit familiar. This is the same setup that I use for my building series to basically create walls. This is just hard coded numbers though, but the actual effect is the same. So if I go ahead and take this and we'll put it instead of this static mesh, because I already have one here. I'll take this entire thing and plug it in just like so. You will see around every single partition, we have a wall. It's not a wall around the entire thing. It's a wall around all the partitions. Now, if I still have the PCG graph selected and I go ahead and turn off is partitioned, you'll see this is the result that I actually would want. I'd want a wall around the entire thing, but obviously because it is partitioned, it is doing it around every single partition instead. So now how do we get around this? What if you want to generate something around the entire perimeter or something that is more global and you don't want it to affect it just per partition. Well, effectively, you have to make it unlimited grid size and then control the grid size inside of PCG. Well, with nothing selected here in the settings section for the default grid size, we can change this to all the way to unbounded. If I select this, you could see we now have unbounded, but that means if I zoom out or zoom in, it stays. It is unbounded. That means we don't actually load and unload based on distance anymore, but that's okay. We can actually still control it within the graph. And the way we could do that is relatively simple. All the way to the right here, after we've done all these computations that we want to do on a global scale, I can right click and search for grid size. And we have the option to change grid size. If I go ahead and select it, you can see there's a simple note that says change grid size. In the details, you can select the grid size. Now you might think, why don't we just have it as the normal one and set it to unbounded or a higher one when we need to? Well, the global one, this one right here, is the biggest you could be. You could always go down from it. You can never go up higher than it. So by making it unbounded as the default, we now have the option of having it unbounded and anything below. Now that you don't need to do unbounded in this whole setup, you could just use the value you need if your setup is 
well designed for it. They, you don't need anything that's going to be kind of a wall or perimeter around the entire thing that you're using, similar to what I am. There's ways around it, but this is how you do it. So if I go ahead and use the change grid size, let's go ahead and select this node and I'll change it to, let's say 6400 and I'll put it right before the static mesh spawner here. Just plug it through, plug it through. And if we take a look, there's our grid. If I zoom out, it goes away, uh, but it comes in and out as one. Why is this? If I press D to debug this point, you'll see there's all our points and you can see they're literally all disappearing and appearing as one. Well, here's the thing. The out is all your points. The grid cell volume is the actual partitioning of it. So if I drag out of here and search for debug, we can actually see here as I load in and out, that's our actual grid. You see those four pieces? That's our debug from the grid cell volume. So to actually make use of this change grid size, all we need to do is just drag out and search for an intersection node and plug an intersection node with the grid cell volume going into source one. And then the intersection can go into the static mesh spawner. And now if we take a look, we can actually zoom out and zoom in, but you notice there's a little bit missing here. All we need to do is just very slightly adjust this volume to make it tiny bit bigger, tiny bit bigger in this axis as well. And now you get all the points and we can go ahead and just zoom out and zoom in. And you can see it's removing per partition there. So now we can just load and unload the entire thing. Now maybe a good point also to show you that you can take this entire thing, have it over here and use a different grid size for the entire thing here. You don't need to have this grid size and this grid size match. So for example, on this one, is that 6400? I can make it 3200. And on this one, we will do a same static mesh spawner. I'll just use a simple transform points node first. And on this transform points, I'm going to turn off uniform scaling. I'm going to scale by 10 in the X and Y. And you can see here as it loads in, it loads it at a different rate. Again, it's a little bit hard to see in this case. So I'm also going to move the actual cubes down 50 units. So now you can see we're loading this section first because the distance on it is higher. As we get closer, we'll start loading in the rest of the actual section down here on the ground. And as we get in, we're kind of the equal distance. And again, it unloads the same way. And remember, in the world settings, world partition setup is set to none. We don't need to have partitioning here. And even though I have no player, if I hit play and then I fly out, you could see it is based off of the location. I am currently playing at runtime and still it is working basically at runtime because the option we enabled on the world actor is set to treat editor viewport as generation source. This does not replace the runtime aspect. It just makes it so it's visible like the runtime aspect, which is very handy. And the beauty is you can absolutely take this, put it somewhere else. And now you have two separate ECG graphs, both working relative to the camera. You do not need to even have it all in one graph if you don't want to. It works great separated. So that was a very quick rundown of hierarchical generation at runtime with partitioning inside of PCG. If you do want a bigger dive into it and explaining kind of all the technicalities and the differences, Adrian Logut, who is actually part of the PCG development team, has actually made a video on it on YouTube. You can check out I will link to it in the description. I highly recommend checking it out as it does do a bigger deep dive into the different types of runtime generation. But hopefully with these tips, you will not have the same stumbles that I had when I started learning this, especially the fact that the points are somehow up in the air. Now, as always, I wanna give a big thank you to the people on Patreon that help support what I do. It really means a lot. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord will be down below as always. And if you're interested in more awesome PCG tutorials, check out this one right over here showing one of my cool new favorite features.